And we're here today with. And Thank you. Uh, gosh, you've had such such an amazing story to tell. I, I don't know exactly where to begin. Mm -hmm. um, if one was to say to you, like, well, where do you begin? Mm -hmm. Where would you start? I just start, and it's part of the whole thing, important part, is the influence my father had on me. Uh, he was a great man, very successful one, and uh, I'm now 98 years old. And I'll be 99 in December. I mean, January of next year. Uh, I'm noticing signs of old age. And so you'll bear with me if anything like that interferes with my message. Um, um, my father was born in 1869, 67, and he died in 1950. Um, he was truly a great man, and uh, he went through uh, um, quite an experience in his own life. And uh, so he is, in his second family, he lost his wife and children in a terrible, terrible catastrophe. Once was the sinking of the excursion boat in 1904 uh, in New York Harbor. That would be the Slocum? The Slocum. And uh, <clears throat> that took his first wife away and Oddly enough, my mother, now my mother, uh, um, was his wife's best friend and was uh, a maid of, what do you call it, uh, at the, at the uh, marriage. Um, and with some after that, mother and dad got together and they married. And we have now, um, myself, a deceased older sister and a brother. And uh, I like to talk about my impression of my father and the influence he had in any success that I have had. He was the son of German immigrants and they came over here in the early days and uh, his father, my father's father, was a uh, shoemaker, old-fashioned shoemaker from Germany. And they had difficulty getting along. And it, the first evidence of that was that um, my father did extremely well in grade school. And when he finished, my father one or no, when he went going to look for a job. Uh, the teachers, I understand, came and tried to influence his father 
and letting him go to high school. Uh, but he was a thick Dutchman, and he stood by his parents. So my father went out and actually got a job as in a, with a company, the John B. Harris Company, as an office boy. And I'll run ahead with this story to set the stage for this. My father worked very hard at anything he did, and he gradually increased his position in the company. And in the final years, he was an officer of that company, John B. Harris Company, a big paper company. Uh, <clears throat> he, as I say, worked steadily and was always reading and always learning. And there he became an, an officer of this big company. Um, <clears throat> they, then I, at this time, was now uh, in high school and 14 years old, uh, 16 years, uh, not 14, and I <clears throat> like most, not most, but many kids at the age of 14 were getting in, interested in musical instruments, particularly the ukulele. Now, I started to play the ukulele left-handed, and we had a lot of enjoyment out of it in the family and all. And I suddenly realized that I may like to do a little more music in my life. And I took up the banjo, and I learned to play it right-handed. The teacher I had uh, on my last lesson, he said, Bill, you are going on your first job, and where we, my, my band is doing a big wedding up in Westchester. And I, so I took all the music with me at home to we play. And it was all marked with chords. In other words, a B7 or a G major or whatever. I did not know the notes in the chord, but I knew the name. And so I went up on my first job and thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so that started me on that line, and I uh, actually, I was working at the West Side Tennis Club as a ball boy for the international group of tennis players. Till then, you know, uh, Helen Wills Moody, and uh, it was, we worked at a, a stadium in Frost Hills, Long Island. It was an option, uh, uh, open-ended horseshoe stadium and held about 14,000 people. And so I worked my way up to a ball boy. So I was working in the stadium. <clears throat> and the ball boy, I'm sure you've seen on TV, they just chase around, 
pick up the ball, bounce them. You learn to bounce them just right, and you learn not to move at the wrong time. Otherwise, there's trouble. Yeah. Well, I. The stadium was, in a, as I say, in Horseshoe, and there was a marquee across there, and all players came in that, through that marquee and exited it. And, uh, uh, and ball boys had to make the same, uh, come in the same and go out the same way. On my way out, I noticed that I, it was actually the first time I was on the stadium courts. There was, um, they had a marquee, and there's a big sign over the marquee which said, uh, if you meet with triumph and disaster, and treat these two impostors just the same. End quote. The sign Rudyard Kipling, who as you know is a famous poet. For some reason that sign uh, tied in with what my father was teaching me. And <clears throat> uh, I, uh, uh, and uh, also, while I was in high school, my father would always encourage me to get some job and do something or keep busy, and uh, which I did most of the time. But I also had the banjo, and learned to play that and organize my own band at the age of 16, mostly with older men, more experienced. And so, and we played weddings and receptions and uh, it was fitting in with my father's pleasure in knowing that I was working and also keeping up with my schoolwork. So in, in my teens, I was going to school and I was playing baseball and apparently quite well. And so a friend approached me and said, you've been having a great uh, time in baseball and doing so well in high school. Would you be interested in getting a scholarship? Well, I was interested in that, of course. And so I met with a committee from Virginia University. And they interviewed me and asked a lot of questions and came to one of the games that I pitched. And then I got a letter from them and said they were offering a complete scholarship to the university. Um, starting the next fall in June or something. Um, so I, and my father was, he was so pleased with this. I did, didn't know what to do with the band, but we could make more money. So we, I got a job for the band, a big Chinese American restaurant in Ridgewood not far from where we lived. And I played there every night 
from July until late August with a nice, with pretty nice income that helped. And uh, I entered college in uh, 1928. And as you recall, that was the beginning of the Big Depression. And with that depression, my father lost almost all of the money he had made. So much so the, the poker he had jumped out of the window in Wall Street, as others did. And terrible. But my father, after this, wonderful life he wound up with losing a lot of money and he went back and he got a job and uh, started again well I remember whether one of the bonds he had for me was a hotel Syracuse it was a thousand dollar bond and it just went down and down and down. And he gave it to me one day and he said, it's worthless. And so I saved it. And then I had to go through the depression and trinity and earn enough money to get through it. And we find finally made it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it was a difficult time for me, uh, suddenly seeing everything go out the window. And, but anyway, uh, I couldn't get a job and no one could get a job. It couldn't out of college. 